Okay, VR34 fans, here we go. Next update video. Since the last time, turbo setup is basically complete, except for lack of intercooler. But I've got a nice little water to air system that's going to fit in here nicely. And hook into the water to air heat exchanger, which is mounted in the front of the car, which you probably saw a while ago. But we have a three inch downpipe with O2 sensor mounted. Um, what else has been going on? Well, move around to the underside of the car. Have a good look at the exhaust. We have flex joint, three inch V-band, three inch all the way to this ugly thing, but it's sufficient to let me drive the car for the moment. I think I'm gonna need to delete that rear muffler there, or the mid muffler, to make this car sound a bit better. All of the rear muffler setups that I've seen though, they're, none of them are three inch inlet, they're all like 2.75. Turns out I've been able to delete the rear O2 sensors, or you know, the ones that are after the cats, without any extra codes being thrown in the form of uh, check engine lights, but the it actually does throw a code, but it's not a critical one, so it doesn't throw the check engine light. So I'm I'm okay with that. Um, what else have we got going on here? So uh, we now have a proper pulse width modulator to voltage converter mounted up under the dash here with the Haltech next to the factory ECU, and that is sufficiently fooling the MAF sensor to think that there's a MAF sensor in the car still. I uh, was having issues with the PWM um, pulsing with a frequency before. Turns out that's not sufficient, but you throw a good voltage at it, and that's very happy. Um, tidied up the wiring here a bit more. Still got a little more to do. Um, O2 sensors can be deleted again, same as the, the rear O2 sensors. So I'm going to be chopping that wiring out of there and, uh, you know, capping the ends with a bit of heat shrink and wrapping it all up so you'll never know they were there. Uh, I still have some wiring left to do for solenoids for VCT or variable valve tone. At the moment, that's still controlled by the factory R32 ECU. I'll worry about that another time. And I've got a charcoal canister to hook in, but hey, I'm not going to worry about that till I get the intercooler sorted out. I'm hopeful that the intercooler will fit here nicely, and then I can have a nice three inch, sorry, four inch bend that'll come up here, mount the filter here and then do some sort of ducting or over the radiator intake or I don't know what they do with these things but we'll see try and get some cooler air to that filter uh, what else we got going on here let's have a look I might start her up Oop. still throwing a check engine light for the um, the delete of the secondary air pump so I have to get a resistor and put that over something to um, chop stop that light coming on but uh, it's nothing too serious now we'll switch to and here we have our Haltech running note I've got a MAF sensor well that's not real really a MAF sensor that's actually just reading my analog voltage input one so the idea of this was I can fiddle with my go over to generics MAF delete output and look at my uh, expand that my table this is my table for outputting the current voltage is 0.71 volts with this value of 15.72 up to 5 volts at full load um, and full manifold pressure um, I might change that to throttle position but hey it seems to be working alright on manifold pressure over RPM at the moment for simulating mass airflow good enough um, other interesting things that I've been doing we'll switch back to ignition corrections don't need to run any cylinder corrections anymore and I'll show you what that's all about Initially I had some concerns about the crankshaft being different to the 3.6. Now what you can see here is I've put three marks on the harmonic balancer. 
I rotated the engine until well, a probe that I had down the spark plug wouldn't go up any higher and then I marked that point at the top point. Then I rotated it further until it started going down and I marked the bottom point. And approximately in the middle is true top dead center for that particular cylinder. And I did that for each of the cylinder pairs, one and six, two and five, three and four. And then with the timing light on each cylinder, I was able to confirm with the ignition locked at zero degrees that everything in fact doesn't need an offset and it lines up perfectly with our timing mark here where my finger's being burnt. Um, yeah, at top dead center one, that middle mark was lined up with here. So nothing to do to change there, which is great. Uh, the only other thing I was looking at doing was changing the fuel system a little and putting in a um, fuel pressure reg. But it turns out that these cars run the same, um, what is it, the fuel pressure reg in the filter, just in front of the rear wheel here, that sucker, and it outputs four bar of fuel pressure. So that is going to be good enough for what I'm going to be doing with low boost. At the most, I might need to put a bigger fuel pump in it. So now, what all this means... All I have left to do is put the inner fender back on, put a wheel on, and go for a test drive. So that'll be the next video. Till then, see you later.